Here we go. We are live. We're live, and that's a good thing, because if we weren't live, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be we wouldn't here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Skip Happens, everybody. You hear the music, and uh, that means we got another great podcast for you. But I need to do something here. Hang on, because uh, our guest here tonight. Let me just do this for a minute. Listen. Here we go. I'm gonna play a little bit of this. Then you're gonna go. That's who that is. <laughs> Listen. Well, his old hands were like leather from working in a cold Carolina well. String 60 hour weeks together for my mama or my brothers and me. He was old fashioned, he was old school. American red, white, and blue. But to me, he was just cool. The man I wanted to be. Well, it ain't set in that he's really gone. If I could call the number still here in my phone, I'd say, hey, Dad, it's me, Dad. I just wanted to tell you that I miss you, Dad. He'd wow. make me laugh like he always did. Before he say goodbye, he'd leave me with this. Oh, Go yeah. on, boy. Be strong, boy. Don't you shed a tear for me, boy. I had a good life, one hell of a room. It's all right. I love you, son. There we go. Wow. So we'll, we'll play a little more of that in just a little while. But uh, once again, welcome to another fun interview right here on the Skip Happens podcast. And please welcome the president and founder of the official country music fan club, Ms. Deb Lamphere. She is right there. Of course, I'm Skip That's Clark, it. your host of the podcast. And tonight, our guest is a national touring artist from Silva. Did I say that right? North Carolina. You did. Get this. Three Billboard charting singles, six CMT and GAC top 20 videos. He is open for many of today's superstars. He's headlined his own shows across the country. He's had some notable sponsors along the way, too. I got this off his website, if you haven't noticed. All right. It's Ooh. over his career. He has partnered with, get this, Budweiser, Old Smoky Moonshine, Textron Off-Road, Ollie's Bargain Outlets, which I've done some of their commercials, uh, Ezra Brooks Bourbon, good stuff, and so much more. He's been featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Man, I'll tell you, ACM's wow. free on street we experience. we got a really I famous know. person hey, with man, us tonight. Dem, I'm not done yet. <laughs> you just hold on. Get this. CBS <laughs> Sunday Morning, Fox uh. and Friends, NFL Network, and more. He founded... And this is really cool. He founded the 723 to 723 Foundation in honor of Harold Linda, college baseball coach. And now I know why. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Keith LeClaire, the 723 Foundation will serve as his vehicle, it says, to support causes he cares deeply about. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, Woo. please welcome Mr. Matt Stillwell. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I've uh, heard a resume any nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> those accomplishments. I, I'm out of breath. Holy smoly. <laughs> well, you, you, did, you did a great job. You did a good wow. job, Skip. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Hey, welcome, my friend. It's a pleasure to meet you, number one. Number Thank two, you. uh, you know, you're taking the time out of your busy day. You said you just got back in town about three hours ago, three to four hours ago from being on the road. And man, I and you jumped right on the podcast with us. Uh, thank you for doing that. Where are you exactly? And describe your surroundings to us right now. So uh, we live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, my wife and I moved back here a little over five years ago, about five and a half years ago from Nashville. I've been in Nashville forever, and um, we've got two little girls, and they keep walking by here. <laughs> Look oh, at that's it. awesome. Um, two little girls that were, are only 14 months apart. And so right uh -oh. there in the beginning, man, uh, uh -oh. you know, I was I was on the road all the time, and she didn't really know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so it wasn't the best recipe, we'll say. Um, and then after my story today, I'm glad that we moved to Knoxville for a little bit. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, here in Knoxville, beautiful East Tennessee, uh, from Western North Carolina. And you did pronounce it right. So, Silva. Silva. Uh, All right. Yeah. And, and what so, is that near, Matt? What is what so is that's Silva close near? to uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, where the Indian Reservation is. Okay. And, All right. Uh, about 35 37 miles southwest of Asheville, oh, right in the mountains. 
I know where you're Ooh, in the mountains. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Like about 40 miles, about 40 miles from Gatlinburg, just yeah, across the park. Too bad. Yeah. That's on my bucket list to get out that way. I haven't been there yet. It, it's a beautiful piece of the country. Like I was telling you, Ithaca reminds me of Western North Carolina. <laughs> For sure. All right. Yeah. Now you just mentioned Ithaca. We need, we talked before the mics and the lights are on and all that a little bit, but uh, explain your connection to central New York. So I played uh, baseball through college and there's a, there's a collegiate baseball league called the Northeastern collegiate league. Um, and I played in Cortland for two years. Uh, we were the Portland apples. Uh, we used to come up to Syracuse. This is probably going to wow. date it a little bit, but, you just come up Syracuse and go to the a Carousel Center, which yeah, is the mall. It's now Destiny yeah. USA, but the same okay, idea. Yeah. The Carousel is so still there. Yeah. We would do that on days off and uh, club. There was a, something I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you know, Utica, Rome, Little Falls, Schenectady, uh, Ithaca, they all have teams. And um, I spent two summers up there. It was, it was uh, pretty cool. Um, they didn't have sweet tea. You guys didn't have sweet tea. I think you do now. <laughs> I oh, think we do. do now, but uh, do. at the time, people looked at me like I was an alien when I asked for sweet tea. I had to learn <laughs> iced tea. <laughs> iced tea. Sweet. Unsweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sweet is, is too nice of a word to say in, in New York. <laughs> yeah. and, and I do nah. want to point out that uh, Miss nice. Deb Lamphere right there, she's mm -hmm. actually in Nashville right now. She yep. is on the road doing her thing uh, with her project in Nashville, and which is fairly close to you, a lot closer than what I am, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're in the Northeast. We're in Syracuse, obviously. So, I mean, you picked music. Were you going to, did you want to play baseball as a, make a living out of that or? Yeah, that, that was my dream. And and after uh, my junior year, I, I started, you know, for four years in division one baseball. And wow, um, my junior year, I had a really good year, which is the year to have a really good year. Um, mm -hmm. 14 mm -hmm. home runs, stole a bunch of bases, played well. And, yeah. um, I got uh, we we won our conference tournament on a walk off single, oh, and man. Uh, my dumb butt tackled our guy that scored <laughs> at, in the celebration, and we had the dog pile, and I I was on the bottom of the pile, and we rolled, and I separated oh, uh, man. The muscle uh, from the bone. It was kind kind of crazy, and this was when you just had one regional you didn't have the regular four team regional and then a super regional you had one eight team um and i recuperated well enough to play we played against in the florida state regional so i lost to tim hudson i'm okay with that all right um he, he's going to be a hall of famer so i'm, I'm good yeah but the um yeah, you were talking about the Mets. You guys were the Mets. I, I played yes. against Chris, Chris Benson that pitched for no the Mets way. for a long time. Yeah, we craziest thing because Clemson's right down the road from us, and Coach Leggett, Jack Leggett, who's the USA baseball coach now. Yep, yep. Um, he coached at Clemson. Well, he started at Western Carolina where I played, and I grew up underneath him. I'm explaining the seven two three thing. Um, <laughs> no, he I'm wore number it. seven. He wore number seven. I wore. And somewhat because of him, I uh, wore number seven. Coach yeah. LeClaire wore number 23. And so that's the seven, two, three. And then uh, Coach LeClaire went from Western Carolina to East Carolina, put them on the map. You know, they they finished number eight this year, um, their top 10 program. And um, that coaching tree is very similar, another New York guy, to the Bill Parcells tree and um, in, in the whole – uh, NFL or Dean Smith in college basketball. The Leggett tree is responsible for four of the last seven national championships. It's pretty crazy. And well, it all started think, in little bitty Cullowee, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think Deb fell asleep on us because we're talking. She did. She did. No, she no. Not to do it. I, I did try to pay attention a little bit, but she, I'm just, she told me not to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it. it up. I'll wrap it up real fast. So LeClaire, uh, Coach LeClaire okay. at 39, he got diagnosed with ALS. Uh -huh. Hot, hottest coach in the country by far. And, um, and so a lot of that is to continue to tell his story. And then uh, via the picture I told you uh, has to do with Ollie's Bargain Outlets that you do commercials for. Yeah, uh, that was Mark Mark Butler. Uh, that was his golf tournament, and it was that's wow. he brings all those guys in, and that's how I got to know Cal Ripken, which I do badges for baseball for him. So we're going to talk about that after. Oh, but yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. wow. I try to I try to interweave my uh, music and baseball, absolutely. which kind of which yeah. kind of answers your uh, first question. Yeah. Uh, just in a roundabout <laughs> way. Sorry. 
I don't know who's going to ask this first, Deb or myself, but um, so explain how you went from baseball That's to playing music. That's exactly where I was so, going. I yeah, thought that, so, that big love there of baseball. Yeah, I, I do this. So I had my senior year is probably that transformation period for me. Mm-hmm. I got hurt, uh, but I came back. I hit a couple home runs in the regionals. That, that whole situation was still great. I went and played summer ball in Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley League. And so I was riding up and down and the guys started on the bus asking me to sing. And up until that point, I'd sing in church and I'd done some other stuff like that, but not really, you know, kind of in the back of my head, I was, I was singing at parties or different stuff like that, but I couldn't play an instrument, couldn't do any of that stuff yet. And, um, and so those bus trips, really is where that kind of started. And and I didn't have the senior year that I had my junior year, or we would probably be having a different conversation. <laughs> um, and I don't know, you might uh, be staying at my house. I don't know if you're playing. I, I could have been. And, and I you probably, know, had, some, I probably um, had teammates or friends that have stayed yeah, there. Exactly. And so I always use this right here. Um, it just, the music started doing this. And yep. um, it just kind of took over. Um, you know, after my senior year, right after it, I remember I played one game right after that and had a couple chances to, I could have gone and chased like independent professional ball. Right. right. And I, by that time though, music had kind of, I recorded a little gospel album uh, that Christmas um, in our time off. So now the NCAA allows you to do things. Uh, <laughs> and get paid for it. That, yeah. You know, before this past year, you couldn't do anything with yeah. your name or anything. And so did a little gospel thing and that kind of, it just, it just really, it took over. And then I, I really just transferred all that, you know, discipline or whatever you want to call it from baseball right into it. And um, I just, I I've always treated it that way. And so it, it, it did, it took over on itself and, you know, by itself (laughs) and and it it can be that. Yeah. So what amazes me is this is your senior year of high school, of course. Right. No, no, this is senior year of college. Oh, senior in college. Okay, yeah. a little bit different there. So I was going to say, yeah. usually in high school, you're really not confident enough to just start singing in the middle of a crowd on a bus. No, and this, not. Is, this is so, this is college. Whole different, yeah. whole different so, so you did not play any instruments at that time. Uh-uh. So did you, I, when did you decide to start that route? Uh, you know, you it, really have to... Right around that time, I had... Okay. Um, I had taken a couple of piano lessons. I had taken some voice lessons um, and, uh, you know, like chorus, my chorus teacher in high school, voice coach and that, that type of stuff. Um, I had a friend of mine that got me a, a video uh, of how to play the guitar. Um, and so it was, there were these little bitty steps. And then once I, once I jumped in, I really jumped in. I got a guitar and I uh, actually, uh, I had a college degree, but I, when I moved to, I decided at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. So I moved to Knoxville and I sold real estate just for a minute, but I was singing on the, I was already starting to sing on the weekends. You can't sell any houses doing that. So That's right. I, I decided I was working for my best friend and I, for whatever reason on uh, one weekend in particular, I heard about Belmont university 17 times. True story. And I got, I'd gone on a road trip uh, to a wedding with my buddy, Jason Price. And that's when I heard it on the radio, they were doing like, um, you know, a a marketing campaign and they had Brad Paisley and Mm Leanne Womack and Trisha Yearwood and all this kind of stuff. And so I was like, man, this is awesome. And I got home uh, that Sunday night and went to a concert and the girl opening the concert had just graduated from Belmont. And I'm like, this is this is crazy for me. And so I had sitting in the parking lot that night, I had a conversation with, with my, his name is Benji Shuler. Um, I had a conversation. His brother played in the NFL was a Congressman Heath Shuler. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I had a conversation with him and he's like, I know what you want to do. Just, you know, this was at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night by two o'clock that following afternoon, I was enrolled in classes in Belmont to make my mom feel better and had an apartment, uh, in Nashville. So I, I kind of, if I make a decision, I kind of go do it, you know, yeah. uh, and, well, you'll regret I, it if you don't. Right. Yeah. And so I, you know, that, I guess you could say that's one thing I'm, I haven't ever done. I've always walked through those doors for sure. Wow. How many years at Belmont? 
Oh, only one semester. So this only is what one I figured semester. out. Oh, yeah, I, did, I didn't need a. I didn't need a. Uh, I didn't need a degree. So what I, I somehow got, and I've never played guitar. I somehow got in a guitar program. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guess my reference letter from my chorus teacher was really good, and um, so I got in there and, and I was learning, 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 and then I figured out that I could take private lessons okay. from the same instructors for half the price. I don't know if you've priced out uh, Belmont University Belmont? lately. But, <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah, yeah we've heard. It's, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's comparable to uh, yeah. Vanderbilt, which is about 60 grand. So yeah. uh, you can imagine what that looked like. And, you know, to be honest with you, it sits right there at the top of Music Row. Um, I had I knew one person via phone call um, before I moved to Nashville, and uh, she ended up doing – this happy hour every Friday that her name was showbiz Liz, <laughs> Liz Moran. <laughs> and she's, uh, she was in publishing still is. In okay. And, uh, but she used to host this, uh, there's a place called Sambuca. It was in Hillsborough village. Um, all these restaurants change names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had, she hosted this happy hour every Friday. And I swear to you, I, everybody that I work with in the business today, I probably met at that happy hour. That and, is amazing. You, you know, and, and that you guys know, I mean, even if you, if, even if you come to CRS at, or whatever, it's, it's a very mm -hmm. small community, you know, it feels, it feels huge to us, you know, but, but really, it, it is. the people that are really doing stuff is a very small community for sure. And so, I learned early on that, you know, relationships and, and that kind of stuff were the most, most important part of, of continuing to do this, you know? Yeah. I, I need to ask, and we've asked every artist this with the pandemic and all that, how, how did all that work out for you? Some say, you know, Hey, I was able to regroup and kind of work on what I do personally. And it gave me more time with the family, so on and so forth. But how, how did it work with you? So I, I had, um, I did get more, a little bit more time with the family. Um, yes and no, uh, because <laughs> some people, <laughs> this is my take on that. Some people are going to, my promote, one of my promotion guys said, some people are going to sit on the couch and some people aren't. So in, in 2019, before COVID, right before COVID hit, I, I had a song called everybody's got a hometown mm -hmm. and I had stripped everything away. So back up a minute, um, I had put a song called shine out back in 09 and okay. that went, this one of the ones that it went to number 51 completely independent still am, you know, um, did well. And that's what allowed me to get out and start touring. So I jumped into a bus probably too soon, uh, but to a bus with band and that whole thing for a decade, for a long time. And so I, I stripped all of that away as a marketing thing for everybody's got a hometown and mm. so it was me and a guitar uh my truck and my bow system and i started playing uh what i called hometown house parties i did one in north carolina then number two was in philadelphia three in new york on uh right there in east harlem <laughs> uh, oh, wow. and downtown la and everywhere in between and oh um, and so, i built up so a bunch of momentum how and, did you get your first hometown? Uh, fr friends and fans. Oh, okay. And it's and it's still that. Um, and so, uh, COVID hit, you know, and but I'd already kind of built things to a certain point. I was like, man, you know, kind of got to figure it out. And I had uh, you mentioned Budweiser earlier and Ezra Brooks. So two mm -hmm. of those, uh, again, back to relationships. Um, right. I had a friend of mine, Megan Tillery, that was part of the uh, the marketing and activation team for Anheuser Busch uh, when I was doing a lot of stuff with those guys. She's at she was at a different company, but she called and she's like, "Hey, this is before mask. This is before. This is like a weekend. We all shut down about a week after that. She calls. And she's like, "Hey, I've got this idea. Can you come to St. Louis?" So I went to St. Louis and I rode around on a Christmas float uh, <laughs> four days. Me and my guitar. And all that stuff and we went through um neighborhoods and apartment complexes and um that for four days cool, and playing music it was cold <laughs> and uh you know but it was really cool and you know at that time if you guys remember you know outside of your immediate family 
this is where you saw other humans, right? Yeah, pretty so, much. Um, not because of me at all, but you would see people come out of, like they're on their decks at an apartment complex and they've been shut up in there the whole time and there would be people crying and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was, it was really a, an eye opening thing. And the, the biggest thing that I learned from that, or, you know, that I kind of took away from it was our need for human interaction. And so I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to double down on this thing. And so I had a trailer I pulled behind my bus, um, like a nine by 14 trailer. You can come over here, Ruby. They can see you in the mirror anyway. Oh, that's yeah, right. yeah. Um, I love it. <laughs> so, um, my this is my redneck ingenuity. <laughs> I, said, I, I was like, you know what, guys, I'm I can I, I'm gonna cut the sides out of this thing so I can be covered but also be mobile. And um, yeah, I took it to a conversion company. They're like, you're crazy. You can't do that. <laughs> and so um, I literally, uh, the guy that I took it to, I was explaining everything I was doing. And he's like, I think I've got an idea for what you need. He sent me a picture of a porch concessions trailer, which I'm basically a, a, a mobile food truck, uh, music, musical food truck. Um, the back half of it is a, is my stage. It's an open, like a porch. Um, then it has a concession window. I, I, I use that somewhat, uh, but I, you know, it's where I keep my merchandise and all that stuff. And I, you know, don't tell anybody, but I, I played, uh, I played 10 shows in California during COVID. Wow. We won't last, tell anybody. We won't, we won't last, tell all the no. people that are watching this yeah. either. So, um, <laughs> exactly. and you know, and it was really cool. And, you know, the thing is, is, and I don't really like this whole word necessarily or that we have to do it is um, it's COVID safe, right? So yeah. it, it's outdoors. It's, yeah. you know, uh, nobody people, around you, but they it's can really you. up to people. Um, and I, and I go to people's neighborhoods. I go to their house. I go, you know, I've done it at, at universities. I've done it at the girls' school. I've done it, you know, all kinds of stuff. And obviously, all most of them outdoors. I've pulled it indoors for a couple of things now. But um, I just got off. Uh, like I told you, I, I've been gone for eight weeks out west playing. Yeah. Um, wow. And it's and it's it's fans. It's um, it's kind of organic. I mean, each one of them goes. You know, I get two or three shows out of each one of them, and. It, it's the best connection I've ever now, had. I got to ask, was all this your idea? Because I'm giving you an A plus for marketing. Because if if nothing else, I mean, that gave you, your name got out there. People probably went online and bought your music. They're going, this is, this guy's the coolest. This is what he did for us. And now, you know, your songs are on the radio. So, I mean, damn, that's an A plus right there. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I was, thank you. I, I was really careful. Marketing now is so different. Um, oh yeah, I was. <laughs> I was really careful not to do a ton of pub publicizing what I was doing last year. Um, right. Coming into this year, I wanted to tell the story. But the good thing is, is that about this particular story, I started before COVID. I was already doing this, and then I and then I had to figure. It you know, no different than any other restaurants had to put stuff outside. They had, you know, everybody had to change what we're doing. You were now on zoom for meetings and, and all right, that kind of right, stuff. Right. So I just kind of had to, had to figure it out. And, and you did. Yeah. Well, and and uh, just real quick, Deb, I just want to say, if we have somebody that's a new artist, somebody young, somebody that's thinking about doing this, but they don't know how to get the, out there, just by listening to this and what you just said, that's going to put some ideas into their head, hopefully. And they're going to go, you know, that's pretty cool. I, I think you know, other artists can do it. I, you know, yeah. and, and there are other artists doing house parties, you know, that's right. a thing for sure. Yeah. Yep. I, the, I guess the difference is nationwide. Um, and I don't know if you got uh, uh, a friend of mine, Drew Baldridge is doing some nope. of the stuff. He has like the Baldridge and bonfires. And, yes. Yeah. Um, we had him on, we had him on the podcast here oh, very know, cool. a couple yeah, of months Drew. ago and just a great guy. And he told us great guy. about that. He's yeah. kind of in that same, you know, uh, businessman <laughs> entrepreneur type thing. Um, I love it. I, love I it. think that people are an artist could, 
could do that. The trailer thing kind of sets things apart. It gives me that um, the same effect that, you know, if I pull up to a club in a bus and, and people come up to it, they're like, oh, something's going on. So it kind of gives a little bit of a different feel than, you know, just a, a patio singer in your backyard playing James Taylor. It, so it's it's a little bit there's nothing wrong with that at all but no not a, not at it all it just it kind of gives you that different thing i would say you know for me uh or for other artists to do it you'd have to <laughs> I, I work pretty i work pretty hard I, I i try to so but i you know i have relationships across the country that's really what allowed me to do that and and i book myself i manage mm -hmm. myself i that's you know, awesome. my own record label and that that type thing and so you, if you had those things, uh, I think other people could totally do it. I, I purposely don't take anybody with me. Um, I don't have a merchandise guy or anything like that. And I go and I set it up and uh, I've got it down, you know, where I, it's, it's relatively turnkey. And then after the show, everybody wants to help you pack up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, yeah, yes. that becomes an adventure. I had a little kid and I was in Marshalltown, Iowa saturday night and I had a little easton his he was five years old uh -huh. and all he wanted to do was help me do it and so once i got it you know, i have a system <laughs> so <laughs> i got it to where i could do that I, I, and so it it really creates this um they see me setting things up by myself they see so that that whole working man type situation and then mm -hmm. building a relationship with a kid that's five years old that you know, wants to carry cords for you or whatever. Right. right. Bring this XLR <laughs> over here. It's, it's the best thing. And that, and I think, you know, my girls got to go with me. Um, they flew out and we got to go through Yellowstone and the Tetons nice. as a little vacation around a show and then uh, to Vegas uh, to do that. And I, <laughs> my wife's giving me a hard time. Cause I told, I was like, honey, it's, <laughs> it's the number one family destination in the country. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it's not at all. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, I know. I got a niece that lives there. Yeah. I know. George, you know. Had, we had a fake Google page up somewhere. Right. That said that, I'm sure. <laughs> and dealing with um, a green screen. Yeah, yeah. So they've gotten to go. I think the kid aspect of all these hometown house parties, it's a big part of it for me because I'm going to people's element. And mm -hmm. They're not, they're not having to get dressed up and go and pay for parking and, do all these different things. Right. I'm just coming. Yeah, I'm in their backyard, so they're more relaxed, and uh, it's just a I different kind it. of feel. Yeah. God, well, we that. need we need to do one. Let's let's do. Yeah. One. I'm, hey, I'm game, dude. Yeah. yeah. Hook the trailer up. Let's go. Well, <laughs> Deb's still in Nashville, but you can come to Syracuse. Yeah. We'll make it work. I like what uh, Katie Lynn wrote. Uh, she and I know Katie. She actually she sings. Okay. Uh, she says that's my dream. Ha ha. Food music truck. Well, come on, Katie. You yeah, can do that. she's awesome too. Well, she's I was telling awesome. this comment that um, one, the whole COVID thing allowed us all to come up with more creative ways to do our business. But what I love about your system, not only were you creative, you also, it's kind of old school. Like it's how mm -hmm. we were raised. And I know you're a lot younger than I am, but the world today is so all about social media and so all yeah. about what you can just get out there, maybe not. You know, there's a lot of people that really don't care what's out there. They just want to be out there. And building relationships in the business world is the number one, in mm -hmm. my book, the number one um, thing that just needs to be done. Because And what you're getting happened? referrals from it. So what better way to get business than referral? And he's got a song on the radio. I just want to add that again. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Definitely. I mean, there's. I think it was, what did I say, uh, 1.2 million hits at this point or 1.3 yeah, million hits. Hey, I man. can't, yeah, yeah, I can't even uh, remember the number that's so big. But yeah. it's just such a great way and it's such a personal touch to do something yeah. that you love and for them to be near something they love. I just love that whole Thank idea. you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's full on. And, and honestly, I would tell you, I don't know, I couldn't narrow it down to a, a certain percentage or anything like that but a lot of these house parties have stemmed from hey dad dir directly from hey dad and um that's been um you know you were talking about people watching a video and, mm -hmm. and screaming mm -hmm. a song and that type mm -hmm. stuff and it it the reason that i that new the new version 
that that you guys are playing and, and thank you that you played earlier mm-hmm. um you know there's six years since my dad passed there's six years of now of realizing kind of that the power of music uh that it's not that i didn't know um but i certainly am experiencing it now i, I knew the song was kind of going to help because it was helping me but i i had no idea that i would be playing at the Anheuser Busch Brewery in Houston, Texas, and have a family of eight come, grandmother down to kids to show me a picture of how they sent their dad off. That was similar to how I sent my dad off, or we sent our dad. It's wow. a, and those type things. I can stand and, and sing. We we're talking about baseball. One of the first places I played the song. Um, I do a lot of stuff with Cal Ripken Senior Foundation, and I literally played. Hey, Dad, 15 feet from Cal and Miss V, his mom, who's now passed, but Mm -hmm. with a slideshow of Cal Sr. and the kids going on behind me. Oh, man. And somehow, you know, I've got crazy walls up. My my buddy Lynn told me after we wrote it, he said, your homework is to go and, and sing through this until you can get through it. And so we wrote it on a Friday, and on that Tuesday, I rode around Nashville uh for about eight hours in my wow. truck sang through every line and now knock on wood <laughs> now i can kind of get through it and i don't know how you do it i treat it like a job but i'll tell you yeah. Skip, if, if you and i now obviously we met in a little bit of a different way but yeah if you if you were at a show and that song hit you at at the show as i'm telling my story and all that stuff and you make a beeline up to me or you wait until the show's over or whatever and you come and you tell me your dad's story, that's when I get wow. emotional. When I when I see it on you, that's when all of that stuff comes back. So I've got some, yeah, I'm sure there's a therapist that can get through that. Good thing is <laughs> that, that writing song, I mean, that is my therapy. Um, yeah, I get and, it. And talking about my dad every night, I, I, I kind of, I treat that like a, a job. And, you, you know, we obviously been talking probably too much about baseball, but you know, no, when, never you're, enough. when you're used to, you know, that's performing too, but you're, you know, a baseball player has to be able to boot a ground ball and turn around on the next pitch and be ready for another one and make mm-hmm. the play mm-hmm. or, you know, go over four and, and get that chance in the bottom of the ninth and, and, and hopefully get a game winning hit or whatever. Right. You've got to have that whole thing mentally that you go through in baseball, like, like that. And, and that's, you know, the two worlds really do parallel each other big time, um, baseball and music. And that, that one in particular for me has been, um, very helpful well, with, you know, with what I'm doing. Yeah. You've got the game winning hit. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- what you're doing right now, go ahead, Deb. Oh, I was going to wait till you're done. I was just signaling that. I, <laughs> as, as I Ra- raising her hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's my, here's my question since you're no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a very the the uh, going to the families with your vehicle and everything, as we said, is a very personal touch. Then you're on the big stage, and you have your big fan crowd, which is a very different experience. Mm-hmm. Do you ever sit back and say, do you ever like one more than the other, or how do you? Well, that's one question, I guess. And then how do you really um, feel yourself? when you're out on the big stage and you got all these people and you can't relate that personally, but you know, you're relating, you have must get very different feelings. You get, it's it's different. Feedback is the difference. Your your feedback comes in groups from the bigger shows. Your feedback becomes very personal from a smaller show. So it's, uh, you know, if you get a chance to go to the merchandise booth after at a big show, then right. you can then you can tell me that. If not, I have to see you um, singing the song, or you know, have uh, someone send something on social media after the show. Right. You it's it's you're there's still that kind of separation. It's a little bit different. Whereas if that happens in a in an intimate setting, you know, even a mm-hmm. two hundred people, you know, it's still right. kind of intimate. Um, that's when that really yeah. becomes, um, uh, it's different. Uh, I, I think all of us want to play big shows and 
get in front of as many people as we can, get our songs on the radio and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but also at the end of the day, getting to know someone else's story because of one mm -hmm. of your songs is very powerful uh, situation. And, and honestly, that's what keeps you going. That's the, that's the, that's the good golf shot in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> yeah, the I love how really. in 18 holes. It's like, it keeps you, keeps you just hammering down, you know? Um, and this one has done that in a, in a really cool way. Do you get out on the links often? No, I, I, um, <laughs> out West, I played about three times and, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff I do, it, I, I have two girls as, you know, I, I help coach their softball. And I got three. Stuff I know where you're So I, okay. Yeah. So I, um, time is, is a factor when it comes yeah. to being able to play a lot of golf, but out West, there's a guy in San Jose, Nate Deaton, uh, program director out there. That's like a scratch golfer. I am not a scratch golfer. And so, uh, I could probably play if I played more. Um, yeah. And so yeah. Drew, actually Drew and I and Chris Bandy and, and George Birds, we all played with, with Nate and that cool. was cool. George is like a, he's also a scratch. He beat Nate that day. So they're, <laughs> they're all about that. And I'm just, you know, I'm having fun. Uh, so a whole different dynamic there. Is there anybody that you'd like to collaborate with? I mean, you're doing a lot on your own, but is there somebody that you just love to get on stage with or do something with or perform with somehow? As an, as an artist? Yeah, um, as an artist. Yeah. Well, it, early on, I played a few shows with Eric Church. I think that would be, from a uh -huh. songwriting standpoint, would be a lesson. <laughs> you know, that would be, uh, you know, and I kind of treat, I try to treat that that way. You get in the room with better guys that, that are better. Mm -hmm. um he, he would certainly be somebody I, i've always uh vince gill was always my love vince my go-to like um he just i mean there he he opens his mouth and it's just different and plus he plays like crazy and yeah uh just a, a nice person and and so that part mm -hmm. i think he would probably be that 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 one uh Liam right. Womack, i like ashley mcbride uh oh yeah him. Oh yes, um, Bible in a forty-four. If she doesn't, oh my god, put that out. I don't know. They're crazy uh, if they don't put that out. They it's have the best to. songs ever. They haven't said anything about it yet, but I, they have to. And I, I totally agree with you one hundred percent on that. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So uh, wow, you've just to you've totally blown me away tonight. Just knowing everything that you've done, and you're doing it all by yourself. That's amazing. I, on your website, real quick, uh, mattstillwellmusic.net, is there pictures of your trailer that people can actually you, see? You can go means? to uh, mattstillwellmusic.net slash HHP, and you, there's okay. a video that plays. You oh, can wow. Just see, you can see the video of, of everything. And uh, I've posted a few of those things, too, and, and, and we'll continue to do it. But you can kind of see what it's all about. And, um it's it's cool man i mm -hmm. i told i had a meeting this morning there in nashville and i told i i really i feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing and um i don't I, know that it, i haven't ever felt that but i i really yeah. do feel that now more than i ever have and i've probably got a little bit more demand some of that's to do with coming out of covid i mean people really want to see live music they oh, really yeah. that they want to get together that fellowship no and that yeah. whole thing and so there's that but um i would tell you that you know organically i've got more demand than i even had around shine or ignition um so and ignition when, has some stuff too when are you hitting the road again uh i play friday and saturday yeah i got home and i it just keep playing so it's, yeah it's, i mean right it's, there it's, locally it's, it's, I play in Cookville and okay. Dan yeah, both of these are um, East Tennessee. Uh, the following week is Alabama and North Carolina. The following week is Green Bay. Ooh. And then, um, all right. The, how many the, miles are you putting on your truck? <laughs> <laughs> I, so the truck has been there with me since 19. It's a, it's a 2019 F two fifty, and I'm at 91, yeah. 91,000. Holy cow. Mm, that yeah. sounds like my cars. <laughs> Yeah, mainly but... mainly highway miles man yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what it was um i got almost i got almost seventy thousand miles on my first set of tires i know that might not be a big deal to some people but my goodness that's a lot of miles no, that's a lot of time. Time. i was usually so like shy. a 
eighty thousand mile warranty. You're almost stuck. Yeah, yeah but you know what? Crazy. That, is, that is a lot of miles. I'm not a mechanic or anything like that, but I know I lease my vehicles, and it seems yeah. like when the three years is up, the tires are shot, and that's at thirty six thousand miles. Right. So yeah. it's like they want you to put new tires on it before you turn it in, or they charge you for it. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, they have they have to find yeah. that. Yeah. If no, you go I know. One, one mile over, it's yeah. thirty six thousand. So, so you up. getting seventy thousand miles or whatever it was, I mean that that's pretty damn good. They that's said awesome. it was all you know the tire shop and all that. They just they, you know a lot of highway miles, but I mean I drive in the mountains too, so I don't know. It was just good tires, I guess. Goodyear Wranglers. There yeah, you go. Good tires. There you yeah. go. Now, good um, year. Maybe they'll call up and say, "Hey, we want to sponsor you." <laughs> you never know. You never so know. Do you, do you map out your your route, say every month? Like you start getting people that are interested. Do you try to accommodate their date, or do you try to have them accommodate what you're doing? I, I try route? to. I, I kind of. There's a big combination of calling existing fans and relationships. And setting, you know, uh, another aspect of these is that it's kind of become this, um, everybody wants to do it again next year. Ooh. And so I remember that and, yeah. and I'll be like, okay, so especially going out West, that's a, that's a more tough uh, trip, so to speak. I'll mm -hmm. set my anchor dates that there's your music industry word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll set my anchor dates and then I'll build around those. And so I'll get, uh, you know, I do one every year in Napa. I do one every year in Bakersfield. I, you know, so okay. I'll set those and then, and then I'll build around that um, stuff. And I go back out West in the September, you know, it, they've kind of, we're starting to, to partner with radio stations. Um, cool. And, and kind of take that where you can get, you guys go sell it. You guys got crushed in this world too, you know, COVID world and you guys go and take the show and, and, uh, and partner with it that way. And that's starting to catch a little bit of fire too. And, and I, so that's how there, I want to scale it to, that would be another qu answer to it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an anchor date for New York or Vermont or um, somebody in the Northeast? <laughs> well, we, I have, I have, I can, I can do that. And I've told, um, and you guys talked to JR and Jay and yep, yep. I, I've talked, you know, I've told those guys that I, I want a run, um, up, up your way. You know, there's some, Please. there's some folks playing it. And then there's some places that I, I play, uh, more so up in, in, um, New England that I, that I have like a regular thing with, but, um, so I would try to hit on the way up and on the way down. Just now, don't do especially it. now that it's kind of opening back up more yeah. up there, you know. So. Just don't do it in January or February. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Or even yet. even parts of December. So. I was getting ready to say we've got a really short window <laughs> that we need to that we need to oh. fit in there. So what do you do if it just starts downpouring at one of these? Well, I've had I've had a few of those, so I'm covered because okay. it, you know now yeah. the the thing. What I have to figure out, there's a few things that, you know, that I've had to learn. Um, I've got a tent. I've got a, a tent that I need to set out if it's going to rain to get, to put my sound underneath it. Um, the Bose has to sit outside of the trailer. Yep. Um, and so that's one little aspect that I have to figure out. And so um, depending on what the show is, um, you know, if it's smaller then you, you can probably go inside and do it. Um, if it got really bad, if it's a bigger thing, uh, like I did a veterans day thing at a university down here, mm -hmm. uh, if it's something like that, that's a different, that's a different thing. You got to have a rain plan prior to. And so, which that's normal to the music business, you know, once it gets to that size, but I've, I've had a couple downpours that, I had probably stupidly <laughs> kept playing. <laughs> but so. uh, your the bows, I know a lot about that. Those bows systems are pretty awesome. So, it's a, it's a great, I, I've literally got the yeah. first one. I've got that L1 tower. The very oh first. wow, okay, yep. And I yep. still have it, and I have. It, th this is the best thing in the world. You you plug in and go. I, I yeah exactly. Yeah, I could pull up at Skip's house, and uh, and play. <laughs> I can pull up and, and I'm I'm playing with merchandise and everything set up within 30 minutes easily. I'm playing probably within 15 minutes. You know, my I the gears are turning. Let them go, brother. Let them go. I'm, I'm in a neighborhood where there's two streets, no through traffic. I have a big ass driveway. Ask Deb, she's 
where that would be something you come through. We could tie in with the radio station. We could have, hey, there's a party at Skip's house. I mean, I'm not afraid. I mean, people are like, oh, you give so much out about yourself. You know what? I, it doesn't matter to me. No. This, this is Maybe about, they'll come mow your lawn for you, yeah, shovel your driveway, paint your house, you know. Yeah, you see well, how, I like how they thinking. They also could paint my house the way I don't want it painted. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, paint, but, paint it with uh, eggs. That would not yeah, be I know, exactly. Skip, you suck. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I would love to, brother. I, 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 I would we're gonna have to, to work on there and um, and 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 do it. And um, I, like I told you, I, I I haven't ever connected better. I play mainly my stuff with my influences and tell my story. You know, in a, I love in your a story, setting. Man. So yeah. wow. And and I urge our viewers and our listeners right now, and if they watch this down the road a little bit to make sure they check you out online at met stillwell music.net and they'll find everything out about you and that song hey dad wow just you know getting back to that and the story about your dad and how all of us that uh, you know i lost my dad a bunch of years ago so I, it's it's like even to this day when i hear that and when they first when uh, jay told me about that it was just like i played it for the first time Oh, somebody just said party at skips. Oh, it's Jay Thomas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but um, when Jay told me about that and I listened to it for the first time, I was just like blown away. And I've said that a million times during this. Let's pivot this a little bit. Let's go in a different direction. What yep. is your most useless talent? Ooh, that's <laughs> a toughie. Let me let's see. My wife is close. She can tell you that. <laughs> She might be the better person to ask. She's probably the better person to ask. She would tell you. So I probably have an answer for almost everything. And she finally just said, started Googling it after. And so my, my talent for useless knowledge, uh, where I know just a little bit about something, uh, but I think, I think that it's yeah, completely yeah, true. Yeah. That's that's easily my most useless talent. Yes. What favorite musicians do you admire? Who? Well, we talked about two of them earlier. Oh, what Eric, famous? Eric, what I meant. Um, would you say what? What famous? No. What famous musicians do you admire? Um, well, it'd be hard to tell you that I don't admire Garth Brooks because mm -hmm. it's it's absolutely phenomenal. I think he's not human. Um, with his energy and just the way he remembers people, and it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Just every you know, you hear story after story, and um, of him, um, I've always taken that the way his, his he keeps everything so personable, mm -hmm. especially with people. And if you've met him, you he you feel like you've known him forever. Yeah, um, absolutely. Kenny Chesney, I'm really close with a lot of the guys that have worked with Kenny forever, and I love his. The loyalty to those guys but the fact that he just never stopped and never took no for it i mean there was 15 17 years before he was in the stadium you oh, know it's like right. it's it, that part of this no one really gets to see and i i admire that probably more than you know you know he doesn't sing like Pavarotti or anything like that right, you know? right, right. but he there's just something man that's i just, just want different. to ride on his boat I just want him to take yeah. a ride. Yeah. Oh, that's, you know, yeah. And hang with him in I, Key West. I think that'd be an experience. I'm more, I'm more of a late guy, but, uh, yeah, but still, but yeah, no, he's uh, that, that part of that for him. And, um, that's, uh, that's kind of where I would, you know, th those are the guys that I kind of look at, especially from, a, you know, a business side of that. You talk about admiring. Mm -hmm. We talked about Eric church and, and Vince yeah. and, uh, from a talent, just crazy and and to be honest with you i'm i'm really enamored a lot with the songwriters with people that no one knows and that are just hands down the best singers best players best everything they just you know they're kind of in the in the background a little and that's bit. what um at crs deb and i would be walking around we'd go to the songwriter night and yeah. it's amazing because now you're seeing yeah. what everybody else doesn't see or yeah. here you're you're you see the songwriters and you hear them play and you go oh my god he wrote that song it's amazing yeah. it's amazing it's is. crazy and and you know there's some of those guys you know some of them there's a guy named chris dubois that i was with yeah. today. oh yeah yeah chris chris doesn't sing or play 
No one knows that. He's written 27 number one, something like that, some crazy yep. number. And uh, But he's a genius when you sit it's in a room with genius. him. It's, it's incredible. Um, you know, you go from someone like that to a Lynn Hutton that I, I write with or a Jason Sellers that I, I've known that um, just – crazy good singers that people, you know, don't really ever get to hear and mm -hmm. just unbelievable. They'll floor you, you know, it's hard for artists to sing their songs when they <laughs> sing, know. Them, you know, I know so, exactly how, and that's often? the way, that's the way Stapleton was before. Yeah. Was that's the same true. situation. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. And now look at them. Yeah. Uh, but um, how often do you get to write? Because you're on the road all the time. You're, you're so, out and about. My, uh, I had, I had Lynn, Lynn and, uh, uh, a non-famous songwriter named Dean Dillon. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Dean, both of them told me early years and years ago, they're like, you need to get out and play. You just go play. If you need to, if you got an idea or whatever, either save it or you feel free to call or whatever you want to do. And so I, I took my responsibility in that, in the co-writing situation I, I hang on to my ideas and I get a lot of my ideas while I'm driving. I bet that's you do. Well, my, my, that's probably my thing. Thinking time. Absolutely. And uh, people think I'm crazy, but like I, I drove from, um, I drove from Salt Lake city um, Thursday all the way to North Platte, Nebraska. You're crazy. Probably 11 or 12, some, somewhere in there, about 12 hours. I didn't, I had silence the whole time. No, no podcast. I, usually it's a podcast. No right. podcast, nothing. I had silence the whole time. My, my wife would go absolutely crazy if I tried to do that with her in a car. I would too. And, and I, but I, that, I got a lot going on. <laughs> oh on. yeah. Oh, there's a lot so, going on. I mean, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of noise going on, but it's all up here. Yeah, and you've tuned everything else. Well, there's nothing there to tune out, but it's nice. Yeah, so I, I keep I keep notes in here, and if there, yep, if, there, yep. if there's a melody or if there's something like that, um, you know, those type things, I I keep and I hang on to them. And um, when it comes time, like my my other meeting this morning was about getting back in the studio and, and cutting a mm -hmm. few songs, and mm -hmm. um, two of those songs I've got to I still have to write. I know what I'm doing. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, but I, I've, I've held on to those ideas and, and different stuff like that. And so I, that's the way that I I view my responsibility within the, the writing room. And, and to me, at, at this point, you know, I've been doing it for a while. So I know yeah. kind of who I am and really what I want to say at some point. And, and the other thing is I get in situations that I have a purpose for a song, you know, um, and, and different things that come, come, come about that, that I have a reason to write a song and put a song out, um, you know, that, that come from different areas. And so, um, I'm kind of to that point too. So I, that's how I, from a creative standpoint, I kind of try to manage, uh, all those things. And when it's time to get in the studio, you know, nowadays, you know, do you go spend, you know, 50, 75, hundred grand to cut a whole album? Wow. Uh I don't know that yeah. you do. Wow. I, I, you know, I think at this point you, you know, you put a song out every so often and maybe you record <laughs> three or four of those at a time, as opposed to the world's so different now, the way people consume music and yeah, absolutely. And how everybody's relate, uh, releasing it and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So figuring out what that looks like now is, is, is a little bit different than it, than it has been. <laughs> um, I see um, Katie Lynn also posted. That sounds like a great song lyric cut off the podcast and radio and just let my mind sing <laughs> there you go there you Katie, go katie's a busy girl over i here. know she's yeah. like all over that well i she is she's a just a great i know her she's a she performs here locally and uh oh, that's awesome she's definitely great just a great talent but uh you know what i mean you you spent almost an hour with us here tonight i don't want i don't want to take you away from your family much longer but uh uh with hey dad what's next for you um, that, what I was just saying, I, we're getting in the studio, okay. uh, to record, um, I think three or four more songs. Uh, we'll put another one out here. Um, don't know that we'll send that to radio. Um, but we'll, we'll put another one out here before too long. Uh, continuing the hometown house party, um, for sure. And, and just kind of hammering down on that and 
carving my way with that whole thing. I have a, um, a thing called the castle sessions, um, okay. that I, is in a castle in North Carolina that I host a really intimate storytelling songwriting thing in a castle. Cool. So that's a monthly that. thing that, that we'll continue to do. And we're filming it like a TV show, uh, a long form video, uh, series that we'll put out at the end of the year. And, just um, unbelievable content coming out of that. Great names, and uh, but more importantly, just great stories and stuff. And um, so, between that and uh, Carolina, you want to say hello? <laughs> this is this is Carolina. Carolina, yeah. hi. hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> so between that think- and, and being daddy, and yeah, you- I was going to say, what do you think of your dad being a musician and having his songs on the radio? Is that pretty cool? Yeah. Hey, I think I think the bug probably has gotten her a little bit too. That's she's, awesome. Uh, she's she's getting into that and mm-hmm. and she's into softball big time. Oh yeah, okay. Both cool. both of them are. So they I think they got the the baseball, softball, and the music uh, for sure. I got the baseball. Your yeah. daddy knows all about this. They're in New York. We're in Syracuse, upstate New York. Yeah. So. So. Where it was 87 degrees and humid today. So, Ooh, nice. It was yeah. 91, 91 and humid in, in Nashville. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Plus, My plus. hair can tell you what the degrees yeah. are here, or the humidity <laughs> level, I should say. Yeah. So have you started uh, your daughter on guitar lessons yet? Uh, we, we've got a couple. we got a little ukulele, and um, mm-hmm. we got that Coco. I don't remember the movie Coco. We got that guitar, but the neck mm-hmm. on the guitar is so big. It's like... They made this kids movie and the neck on the guitar, like adults can barely put their hands around it. And so um, we started a little bit of that um, and I'm just kind of letting them kind of feel their way uh, through everything. And Have you let her sing with you? She has sang uh, a couple times on stage with me. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, she's off and running. Look at that. Yeah, something to be proud of. Uh, before we let you go, and and this has been some great, great conversation here tonight, and um, hopefully with some newer artists listening to what you've had to say and how you've done what you wanted to do and pursue your dream, making it happen, being very creative, doing that. What is the best advice you've ever been given? Whew. That you may be able to pass on to somebody else. Two, two things. Two two things. Uh, there is no substitute for hard work. Okay. And always remember that no one wakes up thinking about you more than you. I'd love that. If if you um, if you're waiting on somebody else to do it for you, you're you're already gone. <laughs> That's great. Right, in my opinion. It's too late. It's too that late. does that does happen for some people, but. For the most part, if you're if you're sitting back, then uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Carolyn, stop. <laughs> Showing her I know. I love it, though. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Matt Stillwell, you know, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Some great Absolutely. advice. And also, you're making it work for you. And uh, Hey Dad is the single that you can hear on the radio right now. Once you listen to it, you will never forget it. And the numbers are phenomenal online with that song and deb was pointing out what were deb what was that 1.2 or 1.3 million dude over amazing well over million and still climbing yeah do you watch those every day do you no no you drive yourself crazy if you try to do that it's like weighing yourself every day you really can't do that (laughs) The number that, that kind of got me on on the hey dad thing is the number of shares on the video not the number of actual streams, the number right. of shares. And uh, on on Facebook, it was it was insane. But that's how that kind of it really spider web to, to people because everybody if they saw it, they would send it to you know their cousin that just mm-hmm. lost their dad or whatever. Right, right. Um, you know, there's all, a multitude of stories there, but that's probably that number that meant the most to me. Uh, was the how many times it was shared? Yeah, you have a heart, and that's mm-hmm. cool, big time. Well, and uh, what people you. people do that, and then somebody's going to go, I want to check more out. Mm-hmm. I want I want to see what this guy's all about. 
Well, I hope so. Dude, and dude, you got we'll, it. Then we'll book a then we'll book a hometown house party and uh, yeah. Well, yeah. we're we're gonna book Get it at, uh, out here in the driveway yeah. because, like I said, I got plenty of room. So, yeah. uh, and dude, I'm dead serious about that. We're gonna have to talk about that. But, I'm gonna hold you to that one. Yeah, absolutely, put it out, put it down. We're gonna have to figure that out. It's gonna be yep. a great. And, oh, and, dude, and we're yes. gonna we're gonna bring this. Yes. All right. I want you to look right there. What does that say? Arizona. Ozzy. Oh. Ozzy. Ozzy. Oh my God. I'm ready, dude. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> is this, that, is, that, this is the glove, my glove in college. And I was still, just going to ask you, look at that. It's a still, Wilson. How very cool. Up. Yeah. How very cool. Do you still get out and throw the ball around once in a while? So, so, uh, the Budweiser thing, man, they would send me to, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals fantasy camp. And so right, I literally, gonna... that's how I, I got to know Ozzy and a couple of those guys in different ways. Mm -hmm. One through Mark Butler, the, with Ollie's, um, but uh, the fantasy camp, man, you go down there with those guys, you're in spring training basically. Yeah. And I, I literally played second base with Ozzy playing short. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, especially <laughs> I was a middle infielder and it's just, it's, it's insane to, it's to think. And I, and I know I've gotten to know, I know Cal better than him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cal's just this a big old teddy bear, you know? Right. Just, right. Oh my God, that I'm just here again. We, we we've gone full circle. We're back. Yeah, talking De De Deb just again. fell asleep you know? and woke up twice. Yeah, and... I know. I know she well, did. It's all right. We, we, we can talk offline on. Now, oh, and, and when, you on. when Deb is here and we sit down, we have a cup of coffee or we mm -hmm. have a beer or a glass of wine, just talk about what we're doing with the podcast. It's just it always ends up talking. We end up talking baseball. We really do. Because I because I've mentioned we've had um I don't you know Michael A. Taylor. Mm -hmm. Uh he stayed here. Nice. Uh and we've uh, got Adrian Sanchez, Paulo Espino. Back in the day, it was um, Zach Walters. I mean, these are guys, a lot of them, you know, now they're not playing, but still, yeah. it's been a lot of years. And uh, it's just been amazing to watch these guys grow yeah. and watch them live their dream. And w the look on their face when they get that call up. I mean, I, I was sitting in my our family room with a player, and the phone rang. His phone rang really he got the call he got the call his coach wow. called him and said you need to go so pack your bags you're you going got to, to be a part of that that's a that's so, a rare occasion just, right just to watch his face and i yeah. no, and i remember i took him to the ballpark that night i took him wow. to the ballpark i said dude you're off and i tell you the truth i felt like i was his father it's like i started to tear up i'm like dude this is it this is your break you're gonna yeah. go play in the bigs you know, I mean, he went up, he ended up coming back, but you know how they go up and down, but he got that first call. Yeah. And that's amazing to see the look on their face. Probably like you as a musician, when you're, you hear your first song on the radio, it's, it's got to be like, wow. Those you things know? are baseball in the, the different levels and music in the different levels and the lifestyle, the political side of it. All of oh, those yeah. things are very eerily similar. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a text from somebody by the name of Deb Lamphere. <laughs> You're reading your Stop phone? Stop I'm reading my baseball. phone as she just texted me. She goes, it's getting dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm losing my light here. All right. But anyways, it's Matt Stilwell, everybody. I want you to go online, look at what he has mm -hmm. done, get his music. Hey, Dad is the song that's on the radio. And I can't wait to hear more. I know I've heard some of the previous music, and I've just – Definitely, definitely good stuff. And I, I love your way of thinking, your creativity, getting out there, getting on the road, and hopefully somebody gets something out of this that, uh, you know, you're doing what you want to do and you're making a yeah. living off. And uh, you're very creative. You're very cool. We do appreciate you taking the time to be on Skip Happens tonight. Thank you. Thank I you. think it's a great thing. Right. It's great to meet you guys. It's a pleasure to meet you. You stay right there. We're going to say goodbye to our listeners. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. You. Deb, you're Bye, in guys. Nashville. Bye. I'm I jealous. am. I just want to say this. I'm pissed that she's I know in you are. I know. It's my happy place. It is. <laughs>